what does success mean to you? You know, when you strive for success in your life, what exactly are you striving for? So I don't like to be pessimistic, but I'm going to answer the opposite. What does failure look like to me? Okay. I'm going to start there, but I promise you by the end I'll be positive. I grew up in a, a really poor family, and there was a lot of uh, issues at home, like alcoholism and all those kinds of things that go along with that. And I knew that I wanted to be in a circumstance that was not limited like that. I knew that that was a terrible way to live. Um, I knew that I wanted my children to have better opportunities than I had. And so for me, success was always about escape, getting out of that type of limited circumstance, never being in a position where I would have regret, look and say, well, I could have done more. I could have got more education. I could have had more opportunity if only I would have made different decisions. For me, success was to live a life that didn't have those types of regrets. I told you I'd get positive by the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And that's a mentality that you've had since the beginning. Um, has that changed with time? Has kids changed that? I think in a way, kids are a catalyst. So if you were worried about stability, financial security, you're worried about providing for others around you, having children will definitely amplify that effect. I had children pretty early. Actually, I was unusual from the standpoint I was married in my first year of engineering. So I started having my kids right at the beginning of my grad school. And so I went through putting myself through school and also providing for, you know, the kids and all the other, you know, the needs they had all at the same time. And so the children definitely caused me to think a lot about how do I, how am I successful so I can provide. And so, I mean, that ties in perfectly to my next question, which is like what, so you have your general idea of success and then you have that, like, I want to escape that escape is what drives you and the kids are what drives you, right? Is there anything else that you think is, uh, I mean, it seems like you got so much stuff going on. It's yeah. So, so, uh, you know, that's what gets you started. But then I, I got to tell you, so, um, a, a really kind of funny story is that, um, back when I was in grade 11, I, I went to see the guidance counselor. Um, because I was, I was really excited to, about engineering. I'd met my first engineer the night before in a gas station. He'd explained to me something about the Carnot theoretical heat cycle, and heat engine and all that. And I was really excited about that. So I went to see the guidance counselor and the guidance counselor was spent about 20 seconds looking through my, my grades, looked at me and said, university is not for everybody, Michael. So, so I had, I had that experience of like oh my gosh, I'm going the wrong way. I'm not getting where I need to get. I, I had a little bit of that wake up moment, right? So I was, I, I turned it around. I got honors. I got the grades I needed. I got into university. But when I was there, I was so in love with the circumstance, being surrounded by like really intelligent professors, fellow students who were all engineers and geoscience, what students all working really hard on a common task. I just ate everything up. I'm one of those students that didn't miss class ever. I like loved all the things I was learning. I was just amazed that I had the opportunity to, to, to learn. And so, so learning has always been my thing. And um, I always had that attitude. A good example for me is right near the end of my PhD. I programmed a whole bunch in Fortran and um, uh, I'd done a little bit in like Excel visual uh, what do they call visual basic for applications, stuff like that. Well, I, uh, Chevron was going to offer me a job in their like super awesome research center down in Houston. But they said, in order to take this job, you need to know C++. I'm like, well, it's about time I found out how to do that. So I spent like two weeks focused and just learned how to like do object oriented programming, get myself ready so I could do that. So at every turn, I love that whole take on the challenge, learn something new. Because every time you learn new knowledge, it's power. Mm -hmm. Like you can do the whole world. It just becomes like new avenues and opportunities for you. So learning has always really excited me. Yeah, it almost seems like to me that like you had this, um, you, you had a, a lot of hardship early in life. So 
the hardship later in life or these little challenges later in life seem a lot easier. You know, like you went through everything as a kid. You had this huge wake up call. You had kids right at the beginning of grad school. And that's going to come with tremendous challenges. Right. So learning C++ to get into Chevron is seems easy. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah. I, I, I think that's a good a good way to put it. Is a lot of things kind of gave me this perspective. I um, somewhere before starting university, I'd spent a couple of years in Africa. And I was in Tanzania living in uh, what they call rapid urban unsurveyed development, which I think the, um, the term for it is squatter camps, basically um, people living in shacks. And while I lived in that environment, I caught malaria like three times in one year. Like wow. I, I had the kind of like, you know, we, we rarely had clean water. We never had power. You know, you're just living in this very, very difficult circumstance. I got to tell you now, I, I made the joke right before we started that my check engine light had just come on in my Jeep. Mm-hmm. Well, that's nothing. That's nothing compared to the things I saw and the, and the, and the challenges. And, and, and in all sincerity, like um, I saw people die of like unclean food and water, you know, dysentery type stuff. Yeah. And, and so, you know, recognizing that I'm just surrounded by so many great opportunities it, it, it really does give you that perspective all the time that oh, it, mm-hmm. it could be worse. You know, we're fortunate. We're fortunate. Like negativity ironically breeds optimism. That's, that's the way I, I interpret it from you. you. You know, it's very interesting. Like if I was to be really critical about myself, what proportion of my motivation comes from fear versus love or trust or joy? You know what I'm saying? Like how much of it is positive versus negative? And um, I think I'd hope that it's not mostly fear. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I think uh, students know this. You know this. You know that whole, like, oh, I may fall behind in the course. I better do the assignments. I better watch the lectures. I better attend. Oh, I'm going to have, um, if I get a poor grade, I'm not going to have this opportunity in the future versus this course is enjoyable and I love this and I want to learn this, right? So I hope, I hope that, in fact, it's mostly excitement. Mm-hmm. You, you, but I think we can always be very critical about ourselves and try to do an analysis of what that is. But I'd agree with you that, in a way, fear was a catalyst that helped me escape the life I grew up in. And then once I saw the opportunity, I had no idea. I had no idea what the opportunities were. But when, when I got into university and I saw all the things we could learn, oh, my gosh. You know, do you remember those experiences when you For show sure. up on campus and you go to like mechanical engineering and got like a cross section of a gen engine mm-hmm. and you sit there and you go like, we learned that. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. 